Okay, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a video on this new Amplify UI, specifically um, the what they're calling cloud components. We're going to start off with the also where this is a Vue.js video. Um, we are going to start off with the let's say getting started components. We're going to start off with what they call this connected components. And as it says here, this authenticated component adds complete authentication for your application with minimal boilerplate. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to integrate this whole sign in UI, this create account UI. We're going to add some additional fields here. We're going to change some of the text, make it a little, make it look a little bit better and show how you can log into an application using this, create an application using this, and then also how you manage the authentication flow in your Vue.js application with this integrated. Um, so here is the application. As you can see, I've kind of changed, put a little header on the top change some of the copy here, what appears inside the fields, added two additional fields to the bottom on create account, um, change some of the copy here on the sign in page. And as you can see what happens when you sign in, it take, it shows you kind of a, a page that's authenticated. This, as you can see, this is my home page. And if I sign out and I try to get to my home page, it's just going to continue to show me this authenticator. So it kind of tracks that after I've signed in, it keeps track of the fact I'm authenticated. So if I refresh, it's just going to, it knows that I'm logged in. So it's going to bring me back to my authenticated component. I do with some other little things in here. I integrate a state manager because I'm planning on adding more to this video in the end. But the main focus of this is to get this component integrated into your application and show you the authentication flow. So please make sure you hit the like button. If you like the video, hopefully you do. Please make sure you subscribe to get more content like this and let's get to the code. Okay, so let's get to the code. First off, this is an Ionic Framework app. I started this app using the normal process for initializing an Ionic app. This is Ionic Vue.js app uh, and it is the blank template. So that's what we started out with. And so let's talk about what we need to do to integrate this component from AWS. So this is the authenticated component that I'm using. They kind of have their quick start guide, which kind of gets you up and running pretty quickly. It's a basic example. So I'm basically, I am attempting to build, not attempting, I'm successfully building upon uh, this example. So uh, I'll talk about what they have here and then we'll hop over to my code. Clearly, we need the authenticator, which is the component. We need the styles. Um, we need Amplify, and we need our configuration information from uh, AWS exports. And then we need to configure it, which kind of fires the whole thing off. And then you can see what they're doing here is they're basically just wrapping the whole app in the authenticator such that um, when you're not authenticated, it'll show their UI. And when you are authenticated, it will show you whatever are, is the child of the authenticator. So that's the approach that we're taking in our application. So let's switch back to our app. So we switch back to our app. You can see we have our basic Ionic app for those of you who are familiar with it. I'm doing a little something different. I'm using Pina as my state manager. Because in the beginning of the application, I'm just keeping track of the login state and the user object. But as we advance to the app, we'll do more things. So this is initializing Pinya. I'll keep a link below and also a link to another video that I've done on this. Then we initialize view, initialize the router, and then we fire everything off. That's all you need to do in main TS. And then as you can see, main TS fires up or launches this app component. So let's hop to the app component because that's where there's a lot going on. And I've done a fair bit of customization to get this here. Um, so if we hop into app view, let's cut, where's the best place to start? Let's start with the script. So I um, don't need it on mounted yet. So this is normal Ionic stuff. We need the Ion app and the router outlet. We need the authenticator component, and we're going to use this uh, hook, use authenticator to do something with that. Here's the styles. Here's actually importing Amplify and a bunch of other um, classes and functions that we're going to use. Here's our configuration information, and then here's access to our main store from Pina. Okay, I'm going to kind of skip over some stuff for now and talk about what's happening and then hop back to the code. Okay, so if we look at our template, um, let me do this. 
let's let's kind of take some of this stuff out so that it's clear so that you can see the difference so these are additional changes that i made to the header to the header which is this guy up here and you can also change this text and you can change these other text values so i'm going to kind of take it out so you basically you can change they have this slot for the header which is this information up here they have a slot for the sign-in header which is what happens when you're in the sign-in tab and then what happens when you're on the create account tab let's just kind of comment them all out so you can kind of see what you get out of the box you can see it recompiled and it rendered and you can see we lost our header text we lost our overall header for application we don't have any text there even on create account we don't have any text there so what these slots allow you to do is these slots allow you to customize let me put them back in these slots allow you to customize the overall user interface experience that you're going to get on this login screen right so we have our header on the outside here and then we can kind of change whatever our welcome text is you know, like maybe we want to say welcome back you know or something like that here so that's what's happening inside of here with these slots the header the area up here the sign in header which is this text and then the sign up header there's additional things you can change like the footer and stuff like that which covered but these are items that i found to be helpful for what i'm trying to do so that's how you kind of modify the header the other interesting thing is if you look here and you see on the create account i have some additional fields added to it so let's see how we do that um, if we look at our authenticator which is up here they have this property called sign in at sign up attributes and here you can specify any of the additional fields that AWS supports by default, and they all be stored as attributes with the user in the incognito. Now, that's not everything that you want. For most applications, we create a separate profile object, and we save a bunch of information there. But for ba a lot of the basic things that you want to include, they can be added with this um, sign up attributes property, and it just adds the fields onto the bottom here, so you can see them and the data is captured when you create the account. The other thing that's interesting to know, if you look at this, is you can see that um, the attributes are called given name and family name, when in reality it's first name and last name. And so you can change the, the um, labels and the headers for these fields by using the interna internationalization um, capabilities. <clears throat> and so if we look at our sign-in page, this sign in here changes this label of this button. Uh, let me sign out. Changes the label for this button. So, for example, I could say sign in by clicking. See, and so it changes that text. And then up here for the username, that's the email address that goes in this field. Oops. Email address. I can see. So, just to show you, that's doing. That's changing that copy. And then the given name. So if we look on the create account, the given name is the first name is being changed, the family name is being changed. And then the last thing is if we go down the bottom, if we forgot your password, it's I've changed the text to reset reset password. Or let's so click here to reset. Your password. So it does give you the ability to do some customization. There's way more things you can do. You can change the colors, you can change the fonts, and a bunch of other things that are all covered um, inside of documentation. But as you can see, it takes the kind of, as they call it, the zero configuration components that you can drop in to basically sign in and create an account and um, gives you some ability to customize it. I think it, this is a pretty powerful component. And for, some, a lot, and for a lot of applications, this is really all you need to kind of make your first step into using uh, Amazon and Cognito for your user management. All right. So that's kind of the UI. Now let's talk about some of the other stuff that's happening in here. Um, so this hub, this hub class, what it does is it gets triggered because I'm saying listen for auth events. So it's getting triggered on specific auth events. And when it gets triggered, it gets an event name, and then you get payload data. And as you can see, the ones I'm really listening on is sign in, sign up, sign out. I was trying to see what's going on with refresh token. 
Um, I haven't really figured out quite what that is yet. Got to dig a little bit deeper. And then configured is kind of, I have a lot going on inside of configured. And so what I'm doing, let's, um, how can I show this at work? Let's do this. So if I sign in, oh, let me fix my text on sign in by. So if I sign in, you can see when I sign in, we go to our home page because what happens is after I sign in, it then shows our router outlet. And if we look at our router, our router says our default path is home. And so we go to our home page. And then on my home page, I have my sign up button. But so now I have an authenticated user. So, but what I want to happen now is that when I refresh the page, I have an authenticated user, it shouldn't prompt me to log in again. So let's go back to my route, my default route for the app. And you can see it's taking me to my home page. It knows that I'm authenticated. And so what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm listening here for this configured event. And when this configured event is fired, I am trying to see if I have an authenticated user. And if I have an authenticated user, I save that user to my user store. And the component by itself knows that it's an authenticated, uh, knows that the user is authenticated. So it just shows the child of the authentication component, which is my router outlet, which then shows my home page. I'm getting my user out of my user store and I'm displaying some user information. And we can confirm that by taking a look here Sorry, not there. We're taking a look here in the developer tools. Just kind of spread this out a bit. Show our console. And you can see if it, it I'll split this so I can show the code too. So you can see when my hub started, when my, I started listening for events, you can see I got my auth listened. The event was triggered, was configured. It goes down into configured. I see that I have a user. I save my user in my store. I log it out. That's what you're getting right there is my user. And then we kind of move on. And like I said, the component knows that it's authenticated. So it moves on. It shows a child component. Now we can also take a look here inside using a view dev components. And we can take a look at what I have in my store. If I go back up to the top level and see my main store, I have my user object, and then I have my logged in information here. And then once again, if I click sign out, you can see that it has cleared out my user information. The other thing that we can see is that um, I, I'm listening for events. So if I go back to my console, you can see it got the sign out event. It signed the user out. It knows the user is no longer authenticated. So then it defaults to once again showing the authentication. Um, the authenticator component. Now, how I magically got that to work, it took me a while to get, figure that out. But um, let's go to my home page. And if you look at my home page, on my do sign out, you can see all I do is the send sign out. What I found was this uh, use authenticator hook. And this use authenticator hook, I poked around in here. Let's see if I can show you how I figured it out. I poked around in here and I saw that inside of it, you can actually send events. And then I found out, all right, so I can send some events. So if I can send some events, what kind of events can I send? I scrolled along here and I found, this is all TypeScript. And it looks like it you could send an event of type auth event. So I said, let's look at auth event. So we get all the way over here to auth event. Because if someone knows where you can find this in the documentation, please let me know. Because I fumbled around and I cannot find it. So you have this auth event object, and then you have the auth event types. And if you you can see here's the auth event types that I'm getting. And I figured let me send a sign out event to the authenticator UI component and see if it will sign me out. And sure enough, that's what it did. So all I'm doing to sign out, well, let's get back at, back down. 
you can see, all I'm doing to sign out is sending that sign out event. The authenticator UI component hears it, it signs the person out, and then I clear out my store and we are back here to our top level component. So that's what we have going on there. So I did the sign in and sign out. Let's just wrap this whole thing up with the create account. And so you can see with the create account, we need our email, our password. It nicely confirms the password um, and captures our first name, last name. We're also going to see that it's, it's pretty neat because it will also do the whole confirm uh, component because sometimes people need that, that two step for account creation to make sure it's a real person's account with an email address. Normally, it might take you a bunch of code to write that, but this just kind of embeds it here for you. So I'm going to create a new account. Let's add another user. Let's get the same email address. And uh, let's create a password here. Let's confirm the password. It also kind of gives you that nice hide show. And let's give my first name. Plus one, my last name is Saunders. So it did the create account. Nice message here. We emailed you. Your code is on the way to log in into the code we emailed. And then it provides the address that it got emailed to. And so now let me get that code. Okay, I have my code. Paste my code in. Confirm. And now my user's confirmed and I have my uh, user logged in. Let's take a look at the additional so remember I said I attach additional fields. I'm not displaying them, but let's look at our tools. And where is, not, let's see, did I set the user properly in my store? So let's go to view. And here's my, my logged in user object. And if I go in here and look at my attributes, you can see that I got my first name, my last name and everything was added to this attributes object, which is what I wanted. And let's see what else we can find here. And so also you can see the states that it went through after I signed up successfully. It um, So the event came in and was sign up, the user was signed up. And after I was uh, validated with the code, the sign in event came through and the user was signed, up, signed in. And this was all relatively, I would say, simple to accomplish, um, create a bunch of features that if you tried to code these by hand with AWS so Amplify, it probably will take you a lot longer to do. So I strongly encourage you all to check this out. As you can see, it's something that can be integrated into your mobile application, as I've done here with Ionic. And it gives you kind of the first step into the entryway of all that AWS can offer you. In the next video, I'll integrate um, some data and integrate some images using the AWS components. We will, in this video, in this video, since I am focusing on view, we will try to access some of the other components for view, but I'll give you a heads up now, uh, as you kind of, we'll definitely touch on the storage component but um, even with the storage component, it says this hasn't been converted to native implementation. So there's kind of another way to get these components working um, by defining them as custom elements in view. And I'll show you how, how that works also. And then I'll show you also how this kind of ties back to the normal AWS API. So hopefully you found this interesting. If there's something else you'd like me to, like me to cover, leave a comment below. I will add the links to the other video I've done on Pinya and a video that I have on kind of setting up your AWS environment to get you started. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.